Hello students, welcome to Economics 201, Principles of Microeconomics. Today we're going to start with an introduction. Um, and so our introduction is going to entail uh, looking at some of the definitions and concepts and ideas that we're going to talk about in this course. Um, so hopefully after today or after this set of lectures you will start to feel comfortable, ease in to our discussion about um, our course, economics. Um, so let's begin, shall we? And so today, or in this, this set of lectures, we're going to go through, um, we're going to talk, we're going to have an introduction. And so hopefully um, I'm going to be able to provide some, besides going through the lecture notes, I'm going to also provide some perspective with some of the points made in the lecture notes and, so, and this is entailing the introduction and then we're going to go through some definitions and then finally we're going to go into concepts associated with using these definitions some of the concepts associated with economics and this course all right so sorry about that um so our discussion i decided to start with this idea of uh just a statement here for the most part we are all economists and then i ask why and some of the questions you might be pondering. So based on this notion that we are all economists, that's a statement I make, but I also preface it with why, um, or ask why. Some of these questions you might be wondering, or pondering, excuse me. First question here, what salary will you earn after you graduate from college? Um, so students are taking a course like this one and other courses at the University of Jamestown. And you may be asking yourself, and or considering, well, I'm taking this course uh, because I am interested in uh, job prospects after graduation. And one of the prospects, uh, one of the things associated with that is the salary that you're going to earn. So what salary will you earn after you graduate from college? And most students, not all, but most students do look at um, earning a higher salary after they graduate from college. So the, I, the idea being, of course, that we are, your, your student is coming to school, University of Jamestown, earning a degree, and perhaps looking to earn a higher salary um, once they graduate. So once they graduate, earn a degree at University of Jamestown, they will earn a higher salary. Or they'll be eligible um, to work in a particular field, an occupation. May not, some of the considerations may not involve a higher salary. Maybe the student um, has a, a, a desire to work in a particular field, which requires some sort of credential or qualification um, involving school. That is an economic question um, along the lines of, well, a student is uh, at the present time investing their time and effort into earning this degree, acquiring understanding, knowledge, um, information, and using that. Um, or they will use that in their future field. Another question might be, will be, what will be your first job after graduation? So if you've asked yourself this question, there's other considerations besides salary to go into uh, a particular job, right? So salary is one of the maybe criteria or one of the criteria associated with your job. But what about locations? Maybe students are looking to stay in the area or they're looking to live in the particular region we're in. Or they're looking to move around, move somewhere else. And so again, uh, if you've asked yourself this question, what sort of job are you looking at after you graduate from college? And perhaps, again, you're thinking about this now. Nothing wrong with that. Well, you have um, you're an economist. You are considering um, your job prospects. And again, one from a salary perspective, but also just what your first job will be. Will you be staying locally in the area? Will you be, will you be leaving the area? Um, considerations that come into play there. Well, you know, where are you going to go? Um, are they going to offer you uh, maybe a salary? Again, it might be a consideration, but also the job, um, what you're going to be doing. Um, are you going to be traveling? Um, does it entail staying in one location? Or are you going to be traveling to multiple locations? Um, so again, those are questions associated with economics. Um, third question, what will be the price of your first house? Well, um, certainly students after they graduate from college, universities, they consider uh, one of the first assets that most, uh, or the biggest asset, excuse me, most folks have is a house. Um, and so students, after they, they graduate, they may be considering buying a house. 
Um, that's an economic question. What will be the price of that house? Where will you buy that house? Um, what kind of mortgage will you be taking out with that house? Or utilizing the finance house? Will you, some students, have the financing? Will you just outright buy a house? Um, so again, that's an economic question. And last but not least, and I use this quite often in class, um, face-to-face -face classes is where did you park your car today relative to where you work go to school live etc and this is really entailing the idea we're going to talk about later on in the course of opportunity cost um, so an opportunity cost uh, briefly here is basically the best alternative to whatever choice you have, 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 cho have chosen um, for lack of a better phrase there but the idea being that if you make a decision there were some alternatives you could have con you considered alongside that decision um, so why did you what, what what were those alternatives and that in fact and we're going to talk about this later on the course gives us an idea of uh, price now this is not going to be an explicit price per se all the time however it gives us an idea of what we consider to be value um, so in line in line with this uh, this example think of where you parked your car today um, relative to let's say you are watching this at home so you live in perhaps an apartment development and they have parking spots outside the said apartment development and most folks will generally park as close as they can to where they live in other words if they live in an apartment development as close as they can to their apartment um, or we could look at this at your job and your job affords parking spaces for their employees you most folks will park as close as they can to the entrance to their job why are they doing that well there's an opportunity cost associated with um, having to leave your car and either walking to your apartment or walking into your job uh, perhaps folks are trying to save time and they save time by closing a clo excuse me parking as close as possible to said apartment to said place of employment the farther away you have to park from the entrance to either your apartment or your employment you will have to walk that much further away and so there's an opportunity cost associated with parking closer the closer you park the clo um, the less time you spend walking from your car into the, either the entrance to your apartment or to your job now there may be some folks that decide they do want to park far away um, you know, a good example of this would be maybe somebody looking to get some walking in and they decide to park further away from their apartment where they live or from their job because they'd like to get a little bit of walking in, a little bit of exercise um, in before they wherever they're going, whether it be home or to work. Another person may be so uh, maybe maybe apprehensive of parking near people, maybe their car, their truck in this part of the world, for example, is too big. And so they may be worried that somebody might hit them, that they will open the door, maybe dent their car or door. And they want to park away as far as possible from other cars, maybe empty and, and spots that are relatively empty. And that way they don't have to worry about that. So their opportunity cost of that happening, that being that their car may be, you know, may be dented, somebody might hit it, somebody might hit with a door. Just being away from vehicles in general, that cost is more important, is higher than um, the walk to their apartment, to work, etc. And so they have made a choice based on the idea that they value um, their vehicle. And so, again, that's an economic question, right? And it really revolves around this idea of opportunity cost. And we're going to talk about this later on. Okay, so these four questions then as I mentioned are going to give us and I are going to sort of start getting us into the flow of understanding what economics is um, sort of starting to think about how if you've pondered these questions um, whether today in the case of the last one for example maybe you've even pondered some of these other questions you are in fact a full-fledged economist um, okay so some definitions um, first things first let's talk about a good um, so when I mean the good, I'm looking at uh, what you might look at from an economic perspective as a good or a service. Um, so what is a good? It's anything that individuals receive satisfaction from. Another thing we consider with regard to satisfaction is the idea of utility. So this is one of these uh, funny economic terms. Um, utility in, you know, in the English language means something along the lines of use. 
but we mean utility in, in the econ parlance, econ verbiage, as uh, a satisfaction that one receives from good. This is a measure that we try to gauge um, theoretically and then sometimes, of course, in application. Um, and so a good is going to be something, is going to be anything that an individual receives satisfaction from. Um, consider that, compare that, excuse me, to a bad. So a bad in the sense of a good. So we're not, we're not using bad as an adjective here. We're just saying bad as literally a noun is, uh, anything that re individuals receive disutility or lack or less utility or dis dissatisfaction from. Um, so again, in the econ economic parlance, these words, you may have heard these words before. I think most folks have heard of goods or services, right? Um, when it comes to things like production, bad in this sense is maybe something in this context folks are not used to, but let's give you an example. Well, certainly a good, um, we can think of uh, anything that's produced. So for example, a car is a good a refrigerator is a good, a, a TV produced is a good. Um, so forth and so on. A service, right? So we can consider the same being here. Service. Uh, a haircut is a service. Um, uh, consulting with your accountant during tax time, the services they provide you. Again, these things are providing uh, folks with utility, with satisfaction. Um, so these things provide satisfaction. Folks want these things. They gain utility or satisfaction from them. Compare that to a bad. And so the the poster child for bad in, in, in the econ world um, from a from an informative stand or teaching standpoint is pollution. Uh, pollution is produced. We produce pollution, right? So uh, again, not looking at uh, or just not looking to offend anybody's sensibilities here. But for example, trash um, is something that most, if not all, people want. It is produced, though. We produce it. For example, perhaps you throw out the trash um, at night during the day into a trash uh, somewhere where you dispose of your trash, uh, a bin or the like, a garbage can. Well, that is still being produced, but it is a bad, right? In the sense that folks, if you give it to them, that uh, they will receive disutility or dissatisfaction from it. And so that's, you know, and that's the poster child again in this context is pollution. Uh, other sorts of pollution or, or could include uh, perhaps a factory emitting some sort of uh, substance, um, uh, you know, from the smokestacks, for example, that's a source of pollution. Cars um, produce pollution. Um, even though we use cleaner fuels, still there's some emissions there um, that are not desirable, and we try to minimize that. Uh, noise pollution. So folks maybe live near an airport, and for example, planes when they take off and land make noise. That is con that is con that is considered noise pollution. Um, so forth and so on. So um, these definitions, again, as we get into the course, you're gonna I'm just in describing them now, defining them now, but We'll use them, certainly this idea of a bad. Um, we might talk about pol uh, um, pollution. When we talk, we get into externalities, we'll talk about that later. But this idea of a bad um, in the context of a noun, literally something that is produced, because we do produce pollution, for, uh, unfortunately. Um, but in the necessary, um, these are just, in some cases, again, byproducts of the goods and services that we produce. All right. Oops, sorry about that. Some other definitions here, uh, land, labor, and capital. Um, land, uh, an economist, we consider all natural resources under the notion of land. That can also include things like metals, oil, natural gas, uh, lumber from trees. Um, so when we say land, we don't really mean um, land in, in that sense only. We, re we actually lump in all these other things um, these natural resources, the oceans, everything into a land. Um, so there you see water, for example, or um, unimproved land. It could be land in a city. We sort of lump this into land. Labor. Uh, we look at um, labor um, being just physical and mental talents. People contribute. Um, and so we look at that. Um, we know most folks of the resources that most folks uh, uh, are familiar with, usually labor is the one they are the most familiar with because 
when we look at the resources provided to produce a good or service labor is the one most folks can relate to because this is the first one again most folks sell and when I say that you sell your labor and in turn uh, you will earn a wage so um, labor is one of these um, considerations here or, or sorry one of one of the resources resource categories and last but not least capital so um, these are produced goods that are used to as inputs to produce more goods so factories machineries tools computers buildings uh, a factory is a building and in the building there's machinery and tools maybe computers and they in turn are used to make uh, to or used as inputs to produce goods or services so um, Ford uh, builds F-150s and trucks in general Chevy and GM and Dodge to via the Ram they may have a facility as a factory in that factory um, they have machinery and in tools um, and, and they, they, they produce an F-150, a Dodge Ram, etc. Um, and so these capital are, are actually goods that are used as inputs for further production. Um, so when we think about land labor capital, these are our resources. And we generalize again um, all, all of these things, these individual elements, into these general three categories. So there are other form, there are forms of capital, right? So this is physical capital. We have human capital. So right now, as a student, you are uh, taking this course and you are investing in your human capital. And then in turn, you're going to use that capital to help a company produce goods and services. Financial capital, the wherewithal that companies have to finance maybe said factories, machinery, tools, computers, and buildings. Um, we lump that into capital. They are just different forms of capital, but we lump that in. Um, so we sort of generalize this. Um, if you've taken accounting um, or finance, uh, so accounts for the, certainly, for the most part, are very specific with regard to these inputs or these resources, etc. So they will differentiate and not just consider everything as land, but they will set, segment out and say, okay, we have a natural resource or gold oil, uh, natural gas, lumber, um, that won't be just, it won't, there'll be a land category there, but there'll also be these other things. So unlike our accounting brethren, we will, they do specify, we do, we typically generalize. And um, so some ways that these are defined, this idea of resources, um, there you'll see uh, all of these uh, different texts and different professors and different economists in general in an academic and teaching sense will define these different ways but the one that I've come across that is useful for me is this idea that land labor and capital resources that an entrepreneur via entrepreneurship will organize and so they organize land labor and capital and they're going to produce goods and services find new business opportunities and develop new ways of doing things that is the that is the idea between behind entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is sort of the 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 management pers uh, consideration here utilizing land labor capital they bring all three of these resources together um, in the general terms that i've provided and they are going to produce goods find new business opportunities and develop new ways of doing things so that's the idea so entrepreneurship, the entrepreneur sort of the umbrella under which land, labor, capital come together to produce these goods, find new businesses, business opportunities, and develop new ways of doing things. So I hope that kind of helps um, students understand. Um, and certainly we're going to get into market structure later on. Um, we're going to talk about things like profit. We're going to talk about things like cost. And we're going to see what the role of the entrepreneur is. The role of the entrepreneur is to bring land, labor, and capital together to produce goods and services. And then we're going to determine um, what uh, should the entrepreneur do what they, he or she is doing. That is, are they, from an economic standpoint, um, producing what we want to, what we want, which is a profit. And we're going to get into that. So this is really important to understand this idea of entrepreneurship and what it is. Um, all right, so I'm going to try to keep these videos with regard to the video lectures about 20 minutes or so. 
sometimes I, I might go a little shorter sometimes I go a little longer but it's just to again give you a voiceover and, and uh, over the material that we're going to be talking about in, in this course so with that said we'll continue this lecture I'll see you next time